Hi, welcome to another how-to by myself, Rob Allen. Today I'm going to talk about sharpening in a spear at home. When you're at home and you have a blunt spear and you need to sharpen it. In the factory I found an old second-hand spear. I've played around with it a bit. I've polished the end just so that it looks more visual for the video. And uh, I'm going to show you how to set up at home how I would do it, sharpening my spear with tools from home. Okay, what we've set up on the table here is an angle grinder clamped into a vise and strapped down. This is giving me an angle of roughly that position. We set it up with a sanding disc. I don't use a rubber backed disc. I use a cutting disc with a sandpaper disc on top. That's to create a flat surface. This angle is very specific to the position the spear is going to be in and how I sight along it. So what I've done, I've angled it, clamped it, so that this facet on the, sh the spear that needs to be sharpened is going to be exactly in the right position and I've clamped a piece of steel across my workbench. This can be a piece of steel, a block of wood, a toolbox. As long as you have a stable surface and the correct angle, it'll work perfectly. So what I'm going to show you is a damaged tip. We're just smacking it with a hammer. That's what would happen if you hit the reef a few times. You can see some grind marks. That was me setting it up. And then we're going to grind it. The way I grind is on the side, spinning anti-clockwise so all the sparks will go away from me. For obvious reasons, you need to wear eye guards and it's controlled at the back by me rotating it. The trick is to keep the top dorsal edge directly towards you and you sight directly down from above. You need to watch the side planes. I'm going to go over this in more detail with a close-up later on, but let's grind and show you what it looks like. As you can see, didn't get too hot. The trick here is to try and keep these side facets uniform in shape. The only way to see that is by looking directly above along the dorsal ridge and you watch these two side facets. Each time you rotate, you keep watching to make sure that each one is exactly the same distance across. If this point is machined in a way that it's offset, it's going to create a massive inaccuracy. So now I've polished the tip just to give it a better look. As you can see, each of these facets are now very uniform. The main thing you're watching when looking from directly above is that this top dorsal edge is exactly in the middle and you're looking down at either side of the sharp edge. These sides need to be uniform in length and you'll see if you get them slightly crooked one will be longer than the other the next time you circle it around obviously the good thing to do is to practice on an old spear first get the uh, action right keeping that dorsal edge exactly center each time you lay it down and keeping the angle obviously the same all the time as you see if i lead it off to one side this side will get a longer grind and these edges will become irregular. As long as these three are regular, then your total facet will remain the same and 
keep the spear point exactly in the center. If that spear tip is exactly in the center, you won't have any inaccuracies. If it's half a mil off, it can cause a major inaccuracy. So, in conclusion, this facet needs to be set exactly at the same angle as your angle grinder. So that facet lines up on the disc and your visual is directly from above monitoring the dorsal edge and the two sides. Some people ask about filing. If you set the flat up so it's perfectly flat, there is a possibility you can file that flat very, very carefully. I would think this is more difficult to do than using the angle grinder. Personally, I would only use it if the tip was damaged and I was trying to take the bench part off. That's the only time I think it would be suitable to use a file or a stone. To recap, don't use a flexi disc. As you put pressure, that surface can change. As I showed earlier, we use a steel cutting disc that's flat and jam the two together, set that up. You can also use a belt sander, setting it up exactly the same with the angle so you have a visual from above. We in the factory use industrial belt sanders, very big, very strong. For obvious reasons, we have large volumes we need to turn out. And uh, we found that is the best because the belt is long and it cools better. On uh, mass production, you need to turn that out as fast as you can, but also keeping it cool. And there you have it. Another how-to in the field, sharpening your spear.